We're in London. So, let's look for video games. <laughs> you go that way, look for it, I'll go this way. Okay. I'm here too. I've done a lot of travel vlogs on this channel, hunting for Nintendo games in places like Japan and Australia, even right here in America, like in New York. But you know what country I've never been to? Pretty much every other country, but England. More specifically, in London. Kim and I are spending four or five days in London City, and of course that means I wanna look for video games. Cause what else is there to do in a new country? From where we live on the East Coast, it's only a seven hour flight to get to Heathrow Airport. We just got to Heathrow, uh, even though it was a shorter flight than what we've been doing lately, Australia and Japan. Uh, we're both pretty exhausted. We land in Heathrow, we take a very expensive taxi. Not an Uber, we just got in a taxi for some reason. We saw a lot of really cool stuff as we were driving in. I mean, this place is huge. We didn't really even understand the scope or size of this place yet. So Kim and I decided to go to London because we want to go see AEW All In at Wembley. And actually, just a couple days before we got to London, Taylor Swift was playing Wembley and Bob and Hannah went to go and see Taylor Swift. They just had a four or five day trip in London themselves, but there is a one day crossover where Kim and I get to hang out with Bob and Hannah in London. This is never gonna happen again. <laughs> I gotta thank our sponsor who made this whole trip possible, Surfshark. And there's nothing better than talking about a VPN when I'm traveling. So a VPN is a virtual private network. Essentially Essentially, it creates a tunnel that encrypts your personal data, masks your IP address, and lets you sidestep website blocks and firewalls on the internet. Specifically for this trip, here's all the ways a VPN helped me. For example, if I switch my VPN to put me here in London, I can buy bus tickets, train fares, even flights, cheaper than if I booked them from outside the country in US. I haven't done any taking my laptop to a coffee shop, I just haven't had time for that on this trip, but if I did, I could use a VPN to protect me while I'm on public Wi-Fi. That way no one gets any of my information or credit card details or all of that stuff. Also, a VPN is great for uncensoring content on, let's say, Netflix or other streaming sites. And if you think I'm done, I'm not, because Surfshark can even help me right here in London when it comes to sex. That's right, Computer Exchange, a store that I'm going to go to a lot in this video. <laughs> it is UK's biggest second-hand electronics shop, and I find so much good stuff in these stores while I'm here. This store's website is actually blocked in other countries outside of England. And that's just all the ways it helps me now while I'm traveling. When I'm home, I have Surfshark's built-in antivirus, which has legitimately saved me from being hacked before. I've told you that story. You can have your one Surfshark account on unlimited devices. And best part, Surfshark has a 30 day money back guarantee. And if you use code beatemups, you'll get an extra four months. Check out Surfshark VPN, links down below. Thanks for sponsoring. We all wake up on this cheery UK <laughs> London morning and head out in search for some video game stores. I have to take this sweater off because there's no air conditioning in here. Did you know that London doesn't have air conditioning? What is with that? It's not like it doesn't get hot. Why is there no air conditioning? <laughs> we all set out for our first day in London. This is the first time Kim and I are seeing the place and it's really pretty, actually. I didn't know what to expect. My editor, Zach, told me it was gonna look like a shithole. We heard that the food was going to suck, but honestly, all of the food we had was really great. The night we landed, we got ramen, which I know it isn't really British, but it's the first thing we ate and it was awesome. Also the red buses everywhere, which is really iconic. And like telephone, like the red telephone booths on every street. So the first store near the hotel we're staying at was Computer Exchange. And this location actually spelled out Computer Exchange, which is nice because it's actually part of a chain where every other building just abbreviates it to CEX. I went to a lot of sex shops in this trip. <laughs> 
As I walked in, I saw a sign right at the front that said, uh, video games at stupid prices. So I'm really expecting to walk in and see a bunch of cheap games. And that is actually what I saw. I gotta be honest, I was very impressed by the prices here. There was also a signed Mario Maker poster on the wall, and Bob and I could not figure out who signed it. I don't think it was Miyamoto, I don't think it was Charles Martinet, but they drew a Mario face on it. Maybe it was Martinet. So the currency exchange here is for every British pound, it's one American dollar and a half. I mean, it's not too bad, but it's not like when we go to Japan and everything seems crazy cheap because our dollar goes so far. It's the opposite way around here. In saying that, these prices are still pretty good. I mean, an $85 Game Boy Color in great condition in a store like this in the middle of London. So yeah, not too bad for being straight in like a city center type area. But I'm not really here to look at retro stuff. I want to see what they have for the Switch. And they had a pretty big selection of Switch games. I am noticing that the variation of games here aren't too dissimilar to what I would see in a GameStop back home in America. It's funny because when I went to Australia, I was finding so many games that got physical releases that didn't release in the US. So I was thinking, going to London, another part of the British Commonwealth, that I would find other releases that people deemed would do maybe better in the UK than the US, but honestly, I'm not seeing anything. Instead, I'm gonna switch gears and just try and find cheap games that I don't have. The first thing that stood out to me was Loop Hero. Again, it's an indie game, but I really enjoyed this game. When it first came out on the Switch, I was addicted to it for weeks. And they have the physical here for only 15 pounds, which is about 20 bucks. 15 British pounds in it, governor? I've been really holding off on using any of that. Slide Stars on an Adventure with Holly H. We played Slide Stars on our channel at some point and we ended up not actually hating Slide Stars too much. I haven't seen this go on an adventure with Holly H version. I'm not buying it, but it is only five pounds, which is a pretty stupid price to be fair. So as well as having all this retro stuff and Switch stuff, they also had your know, Xbox stuff, they had PlayStation 5, all of that. But then they even had a basement and down there, I found 3DS, the original Wii. In fact, this basement area kind of had like a blockbuster vibe of just like a video rental store almost, except everything was actually for sale. I mean, if you were actually looking to pick up any of these older games that you didn't have, this is a great place to do it. So I'm just gonna grab Loop Hero here. While I was checking out, they actually recognized me from the channel and I used it as an opportunity to ask them where else I can look for games in the area. And they recommended uh, Sex as well as there's a game nearby. And I'm excited to go check that out because I haven't been to a game since I was a teenager. While we're walking to the next game store, we see Bulba. Now, Kim, Hannah, and I are all very obsessed with Bulba. It's the worst drink I think humanly possible for your body. It's straight sugar with chewy sugar at the bottom, but it's so good. This was our first one of the trip. It was Moo Boo. Boo. You like it? How's that Bulba? It's good. I haven't taken a sip, but I know it's good. <laughs> they even had a giant fake Bulba out front with what was supposed to be Bulba Pearl stacked up, but rather looks like a bunch of, well, I was going to say poop, but it actually kind of looks like giant Maltesers. I mean, just look at the street that this game exchange is on. It's so pretty. And this is just one of the streets. They're all like this. So I couldn't even walk in this store without seeing something really cool. Cause in the front glass cabinet, there's Knuckles Chaotix for a few hundred dollars. This is a very rare Sega Saturn game, but who cares about Sega, I'm Nintendo. And to the right was a GameCube, but not any GameCube, a Pearl White GameCube. I immediately started Googling Pearl White GameCube because I wanted to learn about what this is. The other listing is 140, but it's, it's the sex. It's here. <laughs> it's here. It's this place. And I found out later the reason for that is because they are very uncommon. And if you do find one, chances are it's going to be very dirty and mucked up. I also saw while I was looking online that there is a Final Fantasy Chronicles Pearl White GameCube. But either way, this is something that's very hard to find. If you have any 
anything you know about it, please leave it down below. I'd love to learn more. I told him to buy it, but he said he didn't want to take it on the train. I don't want to have to carry around a GameCube for the rest of the day. So I'm really liking the vibe at these computer exchange stores. Again, I compared them to Blockbuster, and yeah, I'm still getting that in this store. In general, it just feels very 90s or like early 2000s. It's a little messy, it's a little chaotic, there's so many bright colors and fun shelves. It's a bit haphazard, but it's video games. It's fun, it's supposed to be a little messy. Unlike when we went to Australia, I recognize all of these games. There's nothing really standing out to me that's like yeah, exclusive. Yeah, I haven't seen anything either. What do you think of the prices at sex? Uh, they're okay. Some, every once in a while you'll see something cool that's not so much. So we trained or tubed, or if you're in UK, you call it the tube. Put a, you put a CH on it, I don't know why. We tubed over to game. Now I'm glad I asked that guy in the first computer exchange where these places were, because he told me. When we were in sex, the guy said there's a game store around the corner, but it's in a clothing store on the bottom floor. Yeah, it is. Buried at the back behind the jean denim and the baseball hats was a whole video game store. So this store, I don't know why it's in a clothing store, but it's called Game. And growing up in Australia, I used to have these stores, game stores, called Game. They all closed down and uh, I did not expect to find them here. Interestingly, there's no EB Games or GameStops mm. at all here. There's games, sex, and that might be it. Interestingly, there is a physical for Bet and Kados 1 and 2. I'd be very excited about this if I didn't just buy it in Japan because it didn't come out in America. Kind of funny to see it here. So initially, the only game I saw at game that I wanted to buy was Tachia. Tachia. I don't know how to pronounce it. I actually been wanting to play this. It looks very uh, Breath of the Wild inspired, also Wind Waker inspired. I think it did get a physical in America, but at this point, I'm not worrying too much about what did or didn't come out. I'm just going to be buying games. So this store has a really extensive collection of Nintendo Switch stuff. Uh, they also have a bunch of PlayStation games and of course as you would, as you would expect Xbox vouchers? Where are the Xbox games? Just like in the computer exchange store, the guy working here also recognized me from the channel. And he said, did you see our clearance section? And I started rifling through all these games with Kim. Katamari Reroll Plus Royal Reverie for only $12. Try and five. Wait, that was the game that we were playing that we liked, remember? Oh, yeah, okay. But I don't think we've played five. No, we played three. Well, maybe I should get it. Maybe yeah, it's sure. a sign I should get Yeah, it. maybe. Trine five for 17. Songbird and Symphony for 13 British pounds. You Suck at Parking was $24.99. And there's a sticker on it that says now we're only $12. And I actually have heard a lot of good things about You Suck at Parking and how fun it is. Oh. That's only 20 bucks? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, shoot, okay. One of the biggest clearance sales was for Borderlands 3, new sealed. They had it for 20 British pounds, which is about 30 bucks US. I didn't have this one yet, uh, even though I recently talked about how it's one of the best ports on the console. Well, we went from one game to, one five. Game to five pretty quick. Actually, to six <laughs> pretty quickly. <laughs> And if all of that isn't good enough, apparently at game, when you spend over $30, they just give you a free game? They gave me a Transformers Battlegrounds. They said if you spend more than 30 bucks, you get a free game. Yeah, the place is called Game. <laughs> I've never heard that before. That was the free one. Free game. That's ridiculous. Uh-huh. They were all like 10, 15. This one was even 20 bucks. This makes a lot of sense for you. Whoa, what is that supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best store we found in London, in it. Okay, we've spent the whole morning so far going to stores for me. But it's time to take Kim somewhere. On Google Maps, a place called Hamley's popped up, which looks a lot like FAO Schwartz in New York City, which Kim and I both love because it's hard not to walk in there at any time of year and feel like it's not Christmas. And walking in, it felt just like that. Even down to all the employees standing around showing off all the cool new toys. There was a guy with like this car that he could stick on the ceiling or the wall and drive it around and do sick tricks. There were people flying little airplanes that almost dinked Hannah right in the head. It's like magic almost, just doing all the toys and the tricks and the little hovercrafts. So this place had like 17 floors. They got a Lego store in here. They got an everything store in here actually. Right now we're on the main floor with the Mr. Bean teddy bears. But first, before 
before we go all the way up, we gotta go one floor down, because that's, that's where the video games are. But also a ton of other cool stuff, like a giant Gundam as you walk in. Kim and I, but especially Kim, love blind boxes. You know how there's other things out there in the world that you can just go and buy, but for some reason we decide that gambling for it is more fun and constantly being disappointed that you got the crappy one? We love those. So Kim saw a couple of Teletubby ones, so we got them. They got video games, not very much, but the store itself is really cool. There's so much to look at. There was about 10 different Switch games and uh, they were just the big hitters. Nothing that I was really interested in buying. But there was a giant Lego PS1 Hagrid. There was of course a Harry Potter section down here as well in the corner selling wands and a bunch of other wizardry merch. Another thing that always happens in these travel vlogs is Kim needs to find the Sylvanian family section of the country and we found it here in the Hamleys. How was their selection of Sylvanian family? Surprisingly not that many she said. So Kim and I spent a while exploring the rest of Hamleys but it's mostly toys. They had a whole floor of Lego stuff, they had a whole floor of candy. I bet coming here at Christmas time would be so cool. Hannah had mentioned that she wanted to check out a place called Harrods, which I had no idea what that was, but I wanted to go do something that Hannah wanted to do, so we tubed over to that, and it was a gigantic mall? But they did have a technology area, which Bob led us over to, and there was this one section that had really high-end gaming stuff. So we're in Harrods, and they weirdly seem to specialize in these racing chairs, but this one right here seems to be the Ferrari of racing racing chairs. Very modern. It's very designer. Very sleek. It's very $60,000. It even had a whole wall of like that cracked Joy-Con grip accessory that you put your Switch into that I reviewed on my channel once and I've already forgotten everything that I knew about it. Later this night, we met up with one of Bob's friends, Elliot from Retro Future. He offered us a bunch of gifts, actually. That was really nice. Oh yeah, did, um, you, buy, you, did you buy that at sex? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you think that looks like? I know what that looks like. And then there's, uh, this disturbing. Yeah, I hate that. Oh, kill it. But yeah, it's actually like official Pikmin Japanese. Burn it with fire. It's like a little penis. But little he's scrotum. Kind of Everything's very phallic. Everything that he brought is very phallic. And he kept trying to get us to take that pink Game Boy SP that has been water damaged in a way that looks like it has a penis on it. And he just really wanted us to have it. I guess he just didn't want it. And eventually Kim said, okay, I'll take it. So now Kim has a penis Game Boy. <laughs> Game Boy SP -P. And then Elliot took us over to uh, an arcade. I don't remember the name of it, but it was all neon. It was more of a barcade actually, that, and it was very loud. Felt like we were walking into like a rave or a club or something. And as a couple of people in our 30s, Kim and I, we had to readjust. We had to go back 10 years and get in that mind space and readjust. We're very old now. <laughs> but once we did, we had a good time. There was a ton of different arcade machines there. Kim and I were playing a bunch of fighter games. We also played pinball for a while. There was a bar that we didn't order anything from, but they had a bunch of gaming themed drinks that you could buy. This place was actually really cool. After the arcade, Kim and I were very tired. So we all decided to call it a night. Kim and I went back to our hotel and we went to sleep. London. Day two, in it. Today, Kim and I are heading out to Camden to go to Camden Market. Camden Market is a historic multi-corded market in London, England, that's known for its diverse culture, music, fashion, and food. It opened in 1974. It was a small market with only 16 traders, and now it's grown to have over a thousand stalls. So there's definitely gonna be a ton of things for us to find here. However, I have food poisoning and I keep having to run to the bathroom to absolutely squirt my guts out. So we're gonna hang in here as long as we can. <laughs> There's a couple of game stores over here, but there's also like a Japanese manga mega store, and I wanna go and check that out. Japan Craft Manga Store. Manga? Manga, I should know. Aesthetically, this place was awesome. The building that it's in looks so cool. It's just got a really nice vibe to it. There are no video games. There's not as many figures as I was expecting, although there was a ton of really cool ones to look at. It is mostly manga. 
and plush toys and some other figures and pops and that kind of stuff. But while Kim and I were exploring the rest of the market, a bunch of the other stalls around also had so much anime, figures, manga. I've noticed a lot of anime and metal stores. I'm not sure if this is something everywhere or something that I've never really noticed before, but that yeah, in London, there was just a lot of anime and metal stores. There's a Bandai Namco store here in the middle of Camden Market filled with a ton of gacha machines. I am acknowledging and starting to realize that what Kim and I look for almost everywhere we travel is very Japanese inspired stuff. You know, one thing I've noticed about us, we're very just Japanese coded. Like we're in London, but we're getting boba tea and we're about to walk to the mini so and we want to find the pop bar and then we just walked out of a manga store. Like, why? We come to London to go to Japan. We love Japan so much and live on that high of getting to visit that country that when we go to other countries, we're always looking for the nearest boba place, the nearest anime or video games. The irony isn't lost on me. <laughs> they had some video games here, but it was just a selection of Bandai Namco type games like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Mostly Kim and I were interested in the gacha machines. Heading out from Camden Market and going back to our hotel so that I could use the bathroom. I'm not doing too good today. I gotta be honest. Mm. There's a store right by the hotel called Forbidden Planet London Megastore. And when they say megastore, they really mean it. If you're looking for any kind of anime or manga, graphic novel, comic book, I was floored with how big these floors are. I mean, I filmed the whole thing in one shot and it just kept going and going and going. Every time I turned a corner, there was a more hallway of more manga and comic books and things to see. However, this bottom floor was incredibly humid. There were so many people down here and I don't think they had air conditioning. After going to this store, Kim and I caught the tube for an hour our long trip towards Wembley. The main reason that we even came to London in the first place, to see AEW All In. And as you step out from the train, they shovel you down this really long walkway and just the sea of people walking towards Wembley. There ended up being 50,000 people that went to watch this show. A big reason why we wanted to go is because we have a friend, Kip Sabian, who is part of AEW and is going to be wrestling at this show. Unfortunately, the tickets that we had said that All In started at 5 p.m. So we got there at 5 p.m., didn't see Kip, got upset that they didn't let Kip wrestle. Then we found out later it actually started at 4 p.m. and my ticket start time was wrong and Kip had already wrestled and we missed it. We were very, very annoyed. Kim just got screwed twice because Kim went to the bathroom and then another friend of ours, Jamie Hayter, came out and had her whole return, beat up Soraya and then went back out before Kim ever got out of the bathroom. You know that you're getting old when you skip out before the end of the show to try yeah. and beat the traffic. Yeah. We just didn't want to fight on the train for no. a spot. Why are you annoyed? You know why I'm annoyed. We're a little annoyed we didn't see I'm a lot annoyed, actually. Regardless of that, it was a fantastic show. A lot of people said that it was one of the best, if not the best pay-per-view that AEW has ever done. Getting home after Wembley was a very long day and I was still pooping my brains out. So we decided to just go to bed and uh, look forward to the next day, which brings us to the last day of our London trip. So today we're going to meet up with my editor, Zach, who's been working with me for three years and I've never met him in person. He might not be real for all I know. Might be an AI I've been talking to the whole time. That's my job. <laughs> he said that about me. <laughs> he lives in Brighton, which is only a couple hours away for him. So he came up to meet us and try and find some more video games together. We already hit up some of the chain stores, Computer Exchange, we did game. I wanted to try and find some indie stores, some mom and pop style retro stores. Unfortunately though, that scene barely exists in London. There were a couple, which were apparently some really cool independently owned retro game stores, and they recently closed down which is so sad because they both looked really cool. Unfortunately, that only leaves the chain stores and then a few random stores scattered around that are more hole-in-the-wall phone tech repair type stores that also happen to sell some video games. But those are independently owned and I want to go and check those out today. So 
after waking up and going to a little cafe nearby and getting a coffee and a ham and cheese croissant, which I also want to say for my Australia vlog, I got coffee everywhere and took pictures of all of the coffee that I had. I didn't really have time to do that on this trip, but every single cup of coffee I had was fantastic. And the one here at this little shop is no different. We catch the tube. <laughs> <laughs> over to Games Planet to meet up with Zach. Zach's not here yet, so we actually stopped next door and got a big English breakfast. It's a big old plate filled with eggs, beans, sausage, hash browns, toast. It's just a big old English breakfast. I don't know what to tell you. It was a little surreal meeting Zach for the first time. It also at the same time felt completely normal. Hello. All right, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. I got you. <laughs> I can't believe I finally met you after like three years. We're getting, we're getting breakfast in here. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> he is such a cool guy. We vibe so well together and I've always been able to tell that even through the internet and hanging out with him just felt like I was hanging out with him again. Like it was just another day. You ready for a planet vlog? I sure am. <laughs> I would say there was nothing out of the ordinary in this store, but- Is the PS5 Pro a thing? Uh, not yet. Why? Wait, what's it say? I don't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I nope, I don't know what's happening there. The first store we went into today, we were in there for like two minutes and uh, I saw some things I wanted, like no straight roads. Variants uh, with the fonts in the middle. So yeah. if I get home and I do have it, I can at least be like, well, I got a variant. Yeah. I don't think I have a physical though. Okay. Well, now you can start collecting all the European ones. <laughs> and Kim wanted a Spongebob game for some reason. They haven't really got anything else as far as like older stuff. But there is a sex near here and we love sex. <laughs> The sound of London behind you. It's the bad joke police. <laughs> but then he tells me he doesn't have no straight roads and it was all a lie. So... Brits, huh? He just couldn't find my No Straight Roads. He looked everywhere for it. So I'm only buying Kim her SpongeBob game here, but this guy was really nice. They didn't have my game, but they had SpongeBob. <laughs> also, I'm wearing an Alice in Chains shirt today because I ran out of clean shirts and this was actually one of Kim's shirts. I never wear band shirts, but Kim was wearing a band shirt and so was that. I don't know, I guess I just fit in. We were all in our own little band. All right, we're gonna leave here and we're gonna cross the street and we're gonna go to another other computer exchange just because it's close. We walked right in and immediately we were told that we couldn't film. Sorry, mate. It's filming slow. It's funny because I actually haven't had that happen in a very long time. Like in all the stores in Japan, all the stores in Australia, and then obviously anywhere I've ever filmed in America, I've never actually been told that I can't film, I don't think. So respectfully, we just left the store, which sucks because I found no straight roads again, and I guess I'm not getting it again. I'm trying to make a vlog and I want to film it, so I'd rather save my money for somewhere where I could film what I'm buying. Everywhere else today, unfortunately, is not nearby. The next one's a 30-minute Uber away. This is going to be a very long long day to visit these stores. You had a Greg sausage roll? Nah, should I? You've got to have a Greg sausage roll when you're in the, in the UK. Okay, I? let's go to the game store over here. Walk in and immediately get told that we can't film. Sorry? No, we can't. Okay. Right away, they just did not want us filming in the store and honestly seemed very annoyed that we even tried. So we hurried out of there pretty quickly. That's the second game store in a row today that said we couldn't film, which is fine if that's their rules, I don't mind. The only thing that makes it a little frustrating is we're having to Uber pretty far to get to these places. Half an hour for the first one, 20 more minutes for here to get told we can't film. Across the street from here was a cash converters. When I made the Australia vlog visiting cash converters, I didn't realize they were actually a British chain. Funny enough, even though cash converters are thriving in Australia and you'll find one on every street corner, in UK and London, apparently they're all closed down. And this one that we went to was very small and they had very few games to look at. It was kind of sad. I think that's the games for you. <laughs> oh. Lucky you. Well, so look, I'm gonna level with you. London game hunting hasn't really been super 
easy. Pretty much all just pawn stores, to say it in the American way. The British way would be pawn, but that just sounds wrong in public. Someone, someone literally looked at me when I said it. Not being able to find any independently mom and pop retro game stores was really disheartening and a little sad. There's a store called Play Nation about an hour away, but that's an hour away. And it's the only one that looks like an actual game store. Everything else is closed down for some reason. And then these kind of mobile tech fixing stores that also sell games, we're kind of striking out now being told that we can't film and they're so far apart that I really don't want to take another Uber an hour further out of where we're staying in London just to be told once again that we couldn't film. Maybe rather than trying to find video games, we actually enjoy some things about London. Buckingham Palace is not what I expected. Less what? Gray. <laughs> it is very gray. <laughs> I remember it being a bit col more colorful. For how fancy and elegant and like Harry Potter-esque so many of the buildings are in London, this one specifically just kind of looked like a big white brick. There was once a gold wheat that lived behind that gate but recently it was sold for $40,000 somewhere else in America. Do you think right now there's a single video game behind those walls? I, like the king has a switch. Yeah, no, he's just playing Fortnite. On the <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing right now on his downtime. <laughs> Dropping in salty sands or whatever. <laughs> there's gotta be at least one video game behind there. Yeah. And I'm gonna find it. Yeah, let's go. Also, there were two guards standing in front of the building, but I thought there would be like a couple out front that we could like, you go up to them and you like, you, like kick them, you, like flick them, and they try not to like react. I of course wouldn't kick or flick them because I'm 34 years old and that's insane. But there was this very cool statue out front of Buckingham Palace and we got pictures in front of that. And overall the area was very pretty. Then we walked over to the Big Ben and boy, the Ben is big little gold trim, it looks brand new. It's all polished. Biggest Ben I've ever seen. The Big Ben? Yeah, you know. I mean, I can't swear. <laughs> Watch the TikTok video. <laughs> The one thing that Kim and I still have not done is get fish and chips. Fish and chips is very important to us. I grew up in Australia and I would eat fish and chips by the seaside, by the beach with my friends every single week. It's a cultural thing, but I've never had fish and chips in America that even came close to an Australian fish and chips. Like just, it's like cardboard here. I don't know what you guys do wrong. So going to London where a lot of that culture originated from, I expected it to be awesome. And sure Sure enough, we ate fish and chips at a very cramped British pub and it was easily the best I've had outside of Australia. We cannot get good fish and chips in America. And Kim loves it and we knew we'd want to get fish and chips at some point. This is very good. Pretty much as good as in Australia at the beach. We are across from the Big Ben, so I didn't expect well, it to be that good, but it's pretty good. I think if we went like to Brighton where Zach lives and we got fish and chips by the beach, it would probably be on par with Australia. We are literally eating this right next to the Big Ben, but I will say it was incredible. This was our goodbye with Zach. Goodbye, goodbye. I'll come to the US soon. Yeah. I want biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Before we set him off into the sunset, actually he caught the tube going the other direction as us and then fell down the stairs. Actually, he might not even be okay. Kim and I did a few more things this night before we left London. We went to a Disney store, that was really fun. Across from that, we found this HMV store, which was again, full of band t-shirts and a lot of anime and movies and TV shows. No games though, weirdly. We also went to an arcade, just me and Kim, and we played some pool and some other arcade games. And that was really fun. Also, I have this one clip of you lining up to break the first shot and the ball went immediately into the back pocket hole. <laughs> it was very funny. Oh, and I think the last, last thing we did is we got boba again. There was a boba place called Hey Tea that we had passed a lot on the trip and they said they had zero calorie sweetener. All of the fun of boba that I talked about, the, the heart attack inducing sugar diabetes, but none of the actual sugar. And as somebody who always gets no sugar in their boba because I don't want all that sugar, Sugar, I really wanted to try that. We had to line up for like 
25 minutes to get this boba, but it really did taste just like a normal boba did. I've never seen zero calorie boba tea before. It's pretty good. I can't really taste the difference. We were only here in London for like four days, but we had so much fun. Looking for video games might not have exactly worked out how I wanted, but to be honest, it's not really why we were here in the first place. It was to hang out with our friends and go watch our friends at Wembley. But more than anything, it was just Kim and I spending several days together in another country. Both my parents are British. My whole family is from Britain other than my nan who's Irish. But it was nice to be here. The food was awesome. The city was beautiful. I thought this would be the one time I would ever go to London because I don't know why I'd ever want to go back. But after being here, I would definitely come back if there was any reason to do so. Oi, oi, cheerio. All that in a bag of chips, eh, gov? Now, see ya.